We later return to the SVD, but uh, let's for a second look at a different type of regularization, which cannot easily be expressed using the SVD. And that might be, um, you, you might ask yourself, why do we go through all that stuff with operators with infinite dimensional vector spaces? Uh, why don't we just discretize the whole thing? And uh, then we have finite dimensional vector spaces and everything should be fine. It's not completely wrong, but um, um, you have to be very, very careful when doing that. And I want to show you a very simple example for that. And uh, we look at simple discretization. So again, let's have the integral operator that is here. Yeah. There it is. K u of t is integral over uh, from zero to pi. K of s and i uh, t u of s ds as an operator from l two of zero pi to l two of zero pi. Uh, for k, we will later use this uh, triangular function the, uh, that we looked at several times already, and where the inverse is actually the derivative. Okay, uh, so one thing we might do is we might just discretize the whole thing. So uh, we would not evaluate that at uh, all of uh, at all t in zero pi, and also we would not use k at uh, we would not use s as uh, everywhere in the range of zero to pi. So uh, let's discretize both the interval by uh, introducing x0 to xn, which are equidistant in 0 to pi. And then we uh, can approximate the value of ku at xj by, well, h times the sum over all l, just the, the integral just becomes a sum over the, the evaluations f of u at the points xl. Um, there's this k of xl and xj over here. And uh, there's also, you, you will remember from numerical analysis that there are several ways of discretizing such an integral. For example, you might look at the trapo trapezoidal rule where the DK, dl's are all the same except for the first and last one, which are one half. And uh, um, another one would be uh, Simpson, the, uh, the Simpson formula. And uh, there the DL are ordered like one, two, four, two, four, two, four, and then there's, uh, one, excuse me, one, four, two, four, two, and then there's a one in the end. Okay, so, uh, and Simpson is better, right? Uh, Simpson has a higher order, so Simpson is, uh, is actually preferable. Okay, um, so writing that uh, u of xl as a vector, writing ku of xl as a vector, we arrive at the equation or uh, approximation that this vector is approximated by k tilde h times d, where k tilde is uh, the matrix of k, uh, is of the matrix of the kernel functions evaluated at points x, x, k, x, j. d is the diagonal matrix of the dl that we have over here, and, and h is the step size. Just insert, and then that's what, that's what comes out. So uh, we could say that uh, this k tilde h times d, and for the trapezoidal rule, as I said, that would be one half, one on the um, diagon diagonal, and then again one half at the last part of, uh, in the last element of the diagonal. Um, this is an approximation of the, um, uh, a discrete approximation of the, um, infinite dimensional operator k. So k tilde d1 is the finite dimensional operator that approximates k. Okay, so now given a measurement vector g, which should of course also uh, then be discretized, we arrive just at a matrix equation and we get k tilde times d1 times uh, a u um, uh, in, um, approximation trapezoidal, uh, uh, term, <laughs> so this is the approximation uh, reached by the trapezoidal rule, that one should uh, should then, of course, satisfy k tilde times d1 times that approximation is equal to g. So all I have to do is solve this equation for d or take at least square solution, minimum norm solution, whatever. 
Uh, what happens if we take the Simpson rule? Well, um, exactly the same thing. Um, just the, the constants are a little bit different. For Simpson, we have one, four, two, four, two, four, two, and so on. And I think it's, it's not an H, it's H over six or H over three, something over here. Okay, so um, in this case, the uh, finite dimensional operator, so the matrix that, oper that approximates our K is K tilde times D2, and D2 is H times this diagonal matrix. To get uh, an approximation when the right-hand side is given, uh, we have to solve, of course, the, um, the equation K tilde times D2 times some vector is G, and uh, the result we call U Simpson. Okay, um, so more or less we have two ways of getting an approximation, an approximate, uh, an approximation for our, um, an approximate. We can discretize our operator in two ways, and these will give us different approximations for the result. Uh, so for the function u we're actually looking at. Now I've implemented this and uh, let me show you what came out. And uh, yeah, we'll start. I hope you can see this. Uh, yes, I think so. So um, we have a function f. We, um, that's, um, that's the, um, Stammfunktion, integrating function, is k of x. So k, the k operator is uh, calculating the, uh, the integrating function. If we take for f or for u uh, the cosine, then uh, the result in vector space, in function spaces is the sine. And um, now we discretize all this, right? So we have, uh, I take for, I start with 32 discretization points and I do everything as before. I evaluate my, uh, my function f and my function uh, kf uh, at, uh, um, at these points, at, at, the, at the xk. And um, of course, that's, that's what it looks like, right? I mean, the function I, I'm looking for is the blue one. So that's the f, and the data that I'm given is kf, and that's this. And I don't look at any errors at this point. Um, I assume that uh, all the data is noise-free. Okay, now uh, I need to implement that uh, matrix k tilde, which is here. I need to build that diagonal matrix d, which I do here, and uh, then I... Yeah, first I check that the approximation I get is in fact correct. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the blue one is the approximation. So that's what the approximative uh, discrete operator gives me. The true value, so the sign would be the orange one, but they're close enough. And I chose n to be rather large. If you choose n smaller, then this is even going to be better. Okay, um, so I look for the uh, minimum norm solution. I do that using the SVD here just to show that it actually works, but you could do it with any algorithm you want. And doing that, I get an approximative solution and you see that solution is in fact almost the cosine. So things worked out rather nicely, right? I mean, take think of what we did. We took the, uh, the, the data, so we, I gave you the integrating function. I wanted you to compute the, uh, the, the first derivative. That would be the cosine, and that's exactly what we're getting here, right? So and this is based now on discretization. Okay, so that worked out very fine. Um, let's look at a different thing. So let's improve our integration algorithm. So let's go to the Simpson rule. And I just have to uncomment this. Leave. And again, we find also the Simpson rule gives um, a nice approximation of the operator. 
And so everything is more or less fine, right? It, it, it's even a little bit better. So we would expect the inverse problem to be solved maybe even a little bit better because the approximation of the infinite, op uh, infinite dimension operator by the finite dimensional matrix is better here. Okay, um, so I do exactly the same as before. First, I check that it's really true that uh, A is U sigma V adjoint, and uh, that's what I'm doing here, so that's correct. And now the approximation we get looks absolutely terrible. That's not good. So using the trapezoidal rule was fine. We got an excellent result. But using the trapezoidal rule, we get something that's completely garbage. Now, you might say maybe this is due to the fact that the discretization wasn't good. OK, so let's check. We choose n as 1024. And uh, what we plot, I look at the approximation. How good does the uh, does the finite dimensional operator approximate the real thing? Perfect, right? There's no difference between the two. So the uh, the matrix is um, so the, uh, the approximation is very good. Let's do the same thing. Now let me show you what the approximation is, and it's again, it's completely garbage. Um, and uh, in fact, this is, you might ask yourself, why is it so wide? It's just going up and down very fast, and uh, that's the reason we have this. Okay, um, so that's bad. Can you, can you, can we explain that? Yes, in fact, the, um, the explanation is very easy. And I'll just have to go back to what I did. When using the trapezoidal rule for computing an approximation, I solved k tilde times d1 times u trapezoidal rule, so my approximation is equal to g. When, the sim when I used the Simpson rule, I used almost the same thing. Uh, the only thing I did was uh, I exchanged d2. There was, uh, both were excellent approximations, and in fact, the uh, Simpson approximation is even a little bit better. But now solving the inverse problem means, let's assume for the second that k tilde is invertible. The same is true when it's not invertible, but that makes it even easier. If k tilde is invertible, then both d1 times u and d, d, uh, d1 times uh, u trapezoidal and d2 times u Simpson are both k tilde to the minus 1g. So that means d1 times u trapezoidal is d2 times u Simpson. Okay, d1, that was the matrix with ones on the, on the main dia diagonal, only on the last and final point, there was one half. So this is almost the identity matrix. So this is more or less the u trapezoidal. And this is now equal to d2 times u Simpson. Well, but that means since d2 has varying, uh, has the elements 2 and 4 um, adjacent on its main diagonal, it means that, take for example that u Simpson was constant, then u trapezoidal would be fast varying and the other way around. And this is exactly what we saw in the numerical experiment. So assuming that one of these converges, definitely the other one cannot converge. And so that is meant as a warning, just discretizing everything blindly and then solving the relevant equations, although that gives you continuous equations and it may even give you invertible, uh, it may even give you invertible matrices, at least you could write down the minimum norm solution for these. That may not be the right thing because even with discretization going to, um, with, with step size going to zero, as we saw, we may not have convergence. So this is definitely not sufficient.